The Zumwalt program promised us a revolution. Stealth, electric propulsion, smart 155 millimeter naval guns, and even the ability to install a rail gun. However, the destroyer of the future turned out to be too expensive for the present. All intentions stumbled upon one stark reality, the budget. Therefore, the US Navy was forced to move away from the original idea, turning Zumwalt into a kind of floating launcher of hypersonic missiles. But will an innovative destroyer with newfangled hypersonic munitions be able to displace the good old Arleigh Burke, which has long been the Navy's workhorse with the longest production cycle of any American surface combatant? Although the U.S. Navy has lost its title as the largest naval force in the world to the PLA, it's still the most advanced and capable, with hundreds of surface ships, submarines, and support vessels. Despite all the glory that aircraft carriers have received, the backbone of American surface power since World War II has been guided missile destroyers. Today, there are 74 Arleigh Burke class ships and three Zumwalt class ships. The latter were the U.S. Navy's third attempt to build a new class of destroyers in the last 30 years, cramming 11 advanced technologies into them instead of the more traditional three to four. The Zumwalt class was supposed to give the Marines the afloat firepower they'd been missing since the Navy mothballed its last battleship in 1992. Work on Zumwalt began in 1994 under the auspices of the Surface Combatant for the 21st Century, or SC-21, research program aimed at developing attack ships for the Navy, including an arsenal ship with 500 cruise missiles. But by the end of SC-21 in 2001, it had a completely different name, DD-21, and became part of the new DDX program. And in 2006, it was officially renamed DDG-1000, with plans to name the first ship of the Zumwalt class in honor of former Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Elmo R. Budd Zumwalt Jr. But who could have imagined back then that the DDG-1000 would become not only one of the most expensive, but also one of the most complex projects in the history of the Navy. To develop its think tank, it took 1,200 software developers from 30 organizations to write over 16 million lines of computer code. The ship is controlled by more than 3,500 signals passing through 16 railroad car size electronic module enclosures, each of which is filled with 235 cabinets full of electronics weighing 18 tons. These same signals control everything from opening doors to running the ship's engines, and many processes are automated to ease the roughly 18,000 typical tasks previously performed by the crew. The stealthy design of the ship did not reduce its dimensions at all. It received a huge trapezoidal hull with inwardly sloping sides above the waterline, which was supposed to make it easier to evade enemy radars by reducing its radar cross-section. Instead of the usual mass and rotating antennas at the top, all of this is hidden inside flat geometric surfaces so that enemies do not even suspect the location of Zumwalt. In doing so, it was 40% larger than the Arleigh Burke class and also became the largest non-aircraft carrier since the Navy purchased the nuclear-powered cruiser Long Beach in 1957. One of the most interesting features of the destroyer is the ability to intentionally reduce its profile in combat using ballast tanks submerging like a submarine. But of course not completely. In terms of power, Zumwalt's become the Tesla of destroyers. Electric powers greatly improved fuel efficiency, eliminating the need for a long, complicated propeller shaft and allowing the ship to be operated with fewer sailors. At the heart of the power delivery is the Integrated Power System, IPS, a modern version of a turboelectric drive system that uses Rolls-Royce MT-30 gas turbines and the ship's generators to generate vast amounts of electrical energy that can be intelligently distributed throughout the vessel. We're talking about volumes of about 78 megawatts, which would be enough not only for combat lasers, but also for its own railgun. This is comparable to the energy supply of 10,000 American households. The mechanical connections between the turbines and shafts have disappeared. Instead, the propellers are turned on by electric motors. The Zumwalts were intended to mark the return of naval gunfire support to the Pentagon's active weapons arsenal, a capability lost with the retirement of the Iowa-class battleships in the early 1990s. While the ships couldn't boast the same firepower as the Iowa's 16-inch guns, they could fire 155-millimeter shells much farther and more accurately using the Advanced Gun System, AGS. 
Two of these are mounted on each Zumwalt. The AGS consists of a 155mm cannon and its long-range land attack projectile, LRLAP. This projectile is a rocket with a 24-pound explosive warhead and a circular error probable of 50 meters and has a range of about 83 nautical miles. The fully automated storage system holds up to 750 rounds. The barrel itself is water-cooled to prevent overheating and ensure a rate of fire of up to 10 rounds per minute per gun. By using multiple rounds simultaneous impact MRSI, firing tactics, the initial impact firepower of the Zumwalt guns is equivalent to 12 M198 howitzers. Initially, the U.S. Navy planned to build 32 of these ships, but due to the colossal cost and the introduction of many experimental technologies, the budget for them was gradually reduced, and with it the number of Zumwalts. First to 24 units, then to 7, and finally in 2009, Congress approved the third ship of the class as the final one. Instead of Zumwalt, officials decided to focus on the Arleigh Burke class, which has evolved over three decades into an ocean workhorse. Think of this, a mass series, plans for which already include almost 100 destroyers, extensive modernization, confident performance of air defense and missile defense, as well as anti-submarine missions. But to understand why the choice was made in favor of Arleigh Burke, let's look a bit more closely at four main reasons. 1. Based on FY 2025, the purchase price of DDG-51 is about $2.5 billion per unit versus $4.3 billion average purchase price for one DDG-1000. Not to mention that since 2009, the combined price for three Zumwalt holes has grown by at least 50%. 2. Zumwalt, originally created for shorefire support with its 255mm guns, faced the fact that the only standard LRLAP ammunition turned out to be economically unsustainable, which is why the Navy refused to purchase it. The price per shell soared from an estimated $50,000 to $100,000 to an insane $800,000 to $1 million, which in fact nullified the artillery of the class. Burke, in turn, was designed from the very beginning as a multi-role platform with an emphasis on air defense slash missile defense, and the Flight 3 ships received a new AN Spy 6 multi-role radar and improved power cooling from 2023 onward. Simply put, Arleigh Burke not only regularly tightens up possible gaps thanks to modernization, but also doesn't traumatize the psyche of the command, authorities, and taxpayers with the cost of ammunition easily fitting into the surface action group slash carrier strike group and expeditionary strike group of the U.S. Navy. 3. Flight 3 received a new modular S-band radar with high sensitivity for integrated air and missile defense IAMD, and the Aegis ammunition load and defense scenarios for it are clear and have long been tested on previous ships of the class. During the restructuring, Zumwalt abandoned its dual-band radar, DVR, S plus X-bands, remaining with a modified X-band Spy 3, which added a volume search mode. This, of course, is enough for local cover, but when it comes to creating an umbrella for tens and hundreds of kilometers, powerful long-range radars and an integrated fire control system like the Arleigh Burke destroyers will be required. 4. Burke is traditionally strong in anti-submarine warfare due to the integrated Aegis AN SQQ-89 ASW combat system, deck-based MH-60R Seahawk helicopters, and the RUM-139 vertical launch anti-submarine rocket. A typical DDG-51 Flight 3 configuration has 96 cells of the MK-41 vertical launch system, 32 in the bow and another 64 in the coma which gives the command flexibility in distributing the ammunition, leaving some cells for missile defense and the rest for strike missions. Additionally, such launchers are a universal NATO standard and a guarantee of compatibility with allies, which means the ability to exchange missiles, service systems in a joint manner, and operate according to common schemes. Zumwalt originally had a comprehensive sonar suite, but the updated concept of employment of these vessels no longer requires anti-submarine warfare. At DDG-1000, there are 80 MK-57 Peripheral Vertical Launch System PVLS cells and the replacement of the 155mm AGS turrets with improved payload modules for the conventional Prompt Strike CPS hypersonic missiles. Simply put, it gains the important hypersonic strike feature but significantly reduces the versatility of the munitions set compared to the Arleigh Burke, which is another point in the latter's favor. 
However, the military seems to be seriously intending to revive the Zumwalt class, reformatting it for completely new tasks. Based on photos released in the winter of 2025, we can expect at least four new large launch tubes for the Intermediate Range Conventional Prompt Strike IRCPS missiles. They can also be used to launch other payloads. The missiles will be placed in tubes of three pieces using the Advanced Payload Module APM container, which will allow loading up to 12 missiles. Additionally, the U.S. Navy intends to eventually integrate IRCPS onto its future upgraded Virginia Block 5 class submarines, among others. The Navy intends to bring all three Zumwalt destroyers to combat ready IRCPS capability by 2026, as hypersonic missiles are now viewed as nothing less than a new and critical strike capability for use against enemy strategic targets in large scale battles, such as a possible war against China in the Pacific. And if we're talking about test launches, the most critical period for Zumwalt is 2025. The most difficult challenge for both these destroyers and the Arleigh Burke will not be China, but the challenge from competitors within the U.S. Navy in the form of robotic ghost ships. But this is probably a topic for a separate video. What do you think? Should the military have returned to Zumwalt or spent the allocated funds on additional Arleigh Burke? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.